seen things you people wouldn't believe. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Brian at Whisper Status 74. Welcome to the community. Welcome to the channel. This is the first time you are seeing me. Please consider liking and subscribing. We are real tech for real people. Today's video will be the 83 inch LG C1 versus the 55 inch LG CX from last year. Both panels are mine. And the thought here is to show you how close one generation is from the last. Showing you in brighter settings here, the two different portrait modes, as well as the size difference. The 55 inch needs to be a little bit ahead as um, of the panel. So it actually looks a little bit bigger than it will be in person as they are both using their stand. In this room, the C1 at 83 inches gets near the top of the ceiling or touches the ceiling. Now here in front, just showing you the different portrait modes and what the settings menus look like, how they differ. They did change this year. Thank you so much for joining me today. I find these comparisons between OLEDs to be, um, they're very even. Whatever manufacturer you like, Panasonic, Sony, LG, um, OLEDs tend to look very similar. They are exquisite. They look amazing. Uh, showing you here the two different menu styles. The video prior to this one had the A80J go against the CX. And as I'm showing you here, the CX's menus are brighter. The A80 and the C1, both my A80 and C1 are over uh, 77 and 83 inches. They are both Evo panels. They are brighter than the CX. However, in menus, the CX is brighter than both of them. Now that may be the technology uh, looking to make the panel more efficient, as I'm guessing. You can see the top of the YouTube bar there. It's a bit brighter and even the screensaver here appears brighter on the 55 inch. Now it goes without saying at 55 inches, it will always due to its pixel density yield a cleaner, sharper image. Think your iPad or your phone. However, the panel you see at the top here at 83 inches, we are only about five to six feet away. Special shout out to Jennifer Gala, who also has the second channel, the HDR Super Channel, is the demo you see here. Please go into the co comment section or I should say go into the description, find Jennifer's channel, Jennifer Gala and the HDR Super Channel, and please subscribe to those channels. They are excellent demo material. The HDR Super Channel is designed for users, uh, to people that test displays to be able to use that content and not worry about copyright. Now you'll see here as we go into the settings of the C1 and the CX, I personally do prefer the settings of the CX. There is more uh, versatility. There's more of an ability, more flexibility to change the color. At the end of it though, even though the C1 seems to have less options in terms of, you know, color settings, whether it's natural extended color gamut, they do look the same. So even enabling the extra feature that the CX has, which is very similar to Sony's live color, the C1 kind of has that look automatically. So in order to make them similar, I had to engage that on the CX and they do look equally saturated. They are very close. Now, both of these panels are not calibrated. The reason I don't calibrate panels is I bring in new ones. I like to show what's out of the box. My focus and those watching these videos is the consumer are people that just enjoy their panels. Want to know what they really look like without calibration. Now I'm setting them up as close as I possibly can from one another. And before we even go any further, as we have plenty of time to talk, these are the settings I like to use for these videos. They are more vibrant. 
I like to show how vibrant OLEDs can look. I can make them look as accurate as you need them to be, especially in film. However, they can look very dull on camera if I make them look accurate for film. And I do like to show how bright they are. There is no ABL kicking in. They look amazing. And I'm not super interested as a creator to hear about other settings and should I use this person's settings or that person's settings. I have my own taste as you do. I suggest when you get your panels, don't use anybody else's settings. Even if you're new to this, try, uh, be creative, try and see what you want to see. Go by what your taste is, not what someone else is, not mine, not somebody else. And the echoing of what others like, or that's not, I'm not super interested in that. All I'm showing you is what I like. And to show you that OLEDs are not only extremely bright and extremely vibrant, but they are so similar from one another. The C1 is an EVO panel, the CX is not. Everything you see today in all of these um, demos, they are in HDR. So their OLED brightness, the, everything is at max for those. Uh, so there isn't a brightness edge from one or the other, even though the C1 is an EVO panel. Now, why? while you'll see the 55 inch is a tad cleaner we can agree the 83 inch even though we are very close to it is super clean and is very sharp lots of talk about big tvs are ridiculous you can't enjoy them you have to move your head around uh, trust me you need to own one and spend a lot of time around one to really be able to speak on it with some specificity they are very immersive and almost nearly as clean as a TV 55 inches. Now, I know in the comments of the Sony A80J versus the CX, a lot of concern about the settings, a lot of concern about one being superior over the other. Now, I'll tell you guys, I have a ton of experience with LG's entire lineup. G1, C1, GX, CX, C9, C8, B8. I have an A80J in my own home at 77 inches. And my relationship with Value Electronics, I've spent hours upon hours with the king of OLEDs this year, which is the Sony A90J Master Series, as well as their Panasonic panels from last year which were for filmic use for Hollywood use monitors, as well as the A9G, the AAH, plenty of these OLEDs. Now this work here quickly is done by Roman. I'm not gonna butcher his last name. Roman does also exquisite work. You'll see another um, piece of work from him later in this comparison. Now Roman can be contacted directly. You can um hire or rent or lease some of this work for yourself but i'll link roman's channel below we'll be doing my favorite demo videos and demo creators in a totally separate video which roman will also be featured in as well as jennifer and the hdr super channel As I was saying before, spending time with the A90J Master Series, the A80J, the Panasonics, as well as, in my opinion, the best OLED out there, which is the LG ZX AK, which was a successor to the Z9, as exquisite and beautiful as those panels are, being Master Series and $30,000 ZX, you'd still be shocked how close they are. Even spending time demoing the ZX and the A90J, I did a comparison between those two panels. You can see that on the channel as well. The panel catching my eye out of the corner of my eye was an A9G. So uh, A9G, A9S. So even though there's a war in the comments and people fight and they get very triggered if their panel is not this or not that, I will tell you my opinion, and it's only my opinion, 
They are all so close. Little strengths here, little, um, little things here that may make you want one over the other. But even when I walk into Value Electronics um, Gallery, I would challenge anyone as they walk through, because all you see is the screens. You don't really see the body of the panel. What is what? So go OLEDs, high contrast ratio. You really are getting a very exquisite, beautiful image. And a lot of these comparisons are there to show you how close they really are. Now, OLED technology, we will see a wider color gamut in the next few years. You will see heat sinks on other panels. But in my opinion, they are bright enough as they are. Now, why we use demos, um, I get asked this question quite a bit, as copyright is brutal on the platform. We cannot use movies, and even if we could, try to go around the system, speeding them up, shrinking the image, it doesn't really help us show the true picture quality, which is why you see us using demos. And the demos are exquisite. But look how similar they are, how clean they are. Now, I prefer the settings of the CX. I do feel they are more flexible, and the C1 is definitely more efficient in its settings. But I think the CX gives you, like I said, a bit more flexibility to change the image, even if it's just a placebo, and the C1's efficiency gets you there anyway. I do like the G1 quite a bit. G1 did not have an 83-inch panel this year. And I didn't feel chasing the 5 to 7% peak brightness really made a difference. And upstairs, I do prefer the A80. The C1 is my main movie theater panel. Mostly games down here. I do like Sony's lineup this year, especially with the processor. Lower bit content looks much better though the processing on LGs had definitely caught up to Sony last year. Which may be important to you if you watch a lot of cable TV, but LG's processing is also excellent. Now, as I mentioned before, when you're watching me or anyone else or what you read, I suggest you try to develop your own taste. Try to develop your own, um, what you truly prefer. Sometimes we'll echo what others say and never develop a taste of our own. Think of it as an artist and color. Tell me what you prefer. I promise if we all got in a room together, we'd all have such different tastes of what we like accuracy versus vibrancy. And regardless what anyone says, there is no wrong. These displays will be yours. You want dynamic contrast on? No problem. You like motion interpolation? Put it on. You like bracket frame insertion? Engage it. It's really more what you prefer versus what someone else says is correct. You like things to look more saturated? Enable it. So be careful when asking for settings. Say to yourself, do I like that? But don't be afraid to experiment. And to just really enjoy. You may find a more vibrant preset works better for higher end content, such as demos or animation. And the more accurate filmmaker modes or cinema modes work better for older films with a stronger grain structure. But if you want more pop, put it in there. Again, treat it as if you're an artist picking colors. Now, all of these demos are very punishing. 
but it is nice to be able to film OLEDs and not have to explain this is why you're not seeing blooming or you're seeing blooming. When you're filming LEDs, unfortunately LEDs do show up more blooming on camera than what's actually in person. And again, having a larger panel myself, I may be repeating myself, I am very close. I am six to seven feet gaming and nine to 10 feet movie watching. The image never feels soft to me. I don't ever feel lost in the image where I have to turn my head. Um, you really do need to own a panel of this size to be able to really critique it and say it's a, it's a bad thing or a good thing. I can tell you that smaller displays again have a sharper image again think your phone think an ipad but without actually owning these panels and living with these larger panels uh being in a store doesn't quite give it the justice that it deserves you need to really sit with one in order to talk about it being worth it or not me, I'm a little older. I am in my late 40s. I have always been a home theater nut. So I always wanted to have that theater experience, especially with the aspect ratios that can be very thin with very heavy black bars. With these larger panels, it's amazing on the 83 inch, you can see the very narrow um, aspect ratio of something like Godzilla vs. King Kong and actually prefer it. In Blade Runner 2049, you prefer it because with an OLED, it kind of just hovers in the air. They both look fantastic. We will see where LEDs go with micro LED, mini LED, dual cell. But seeing the fight be more, um, more based on OLED versus OLED this year versus the years prior was OLED versus LED. There was a lot of infighting between Sony and LG and what really was the issue between both companies is what they didn't have yet. You know, was there uh, the gaming features for Sony? Was that going to be enough? Was this going to be updated? We had the issues with the CX or I'm sorry, the C1 recently in the G1. So the battle for all these panels, or I should say all these companies is to put out a finished product. Don't rely on updates going forward. None of these companies should be doing that. Updates should be for the operating system, not the picture quality. Now the black levels that we see in OLEDs are not just for the edges or the outlines. Think the texture the scales, hair, uh, skin, the blacks that you see in material. That's where OLEDs really do uh, come out on top, especially now with a lot of the content we see, um, whether it's subpar HDR, can look very faded and very washed out. One of my favorite demos here from LG Global. And there isn't the crushing of the stars even seeing the a80 versus the c1 or i should say the cx this whole crushing of blacks you'll see more of that on the camera they've come so far than they were years ago where it was either totally black or bright but that contrast ratio that um that ability to not wash out an image is so important Again, more to the source material, which lately I've seen in gaming to look very washed out, even on OLEDs. Then playing at one of my LEDs, I'm amazed at how washed out it is. So it's the source a lot of the time, but the contrast ratio will always be the strength. And as we see LEDs, for some reason, as they become more efficient, their contrast ratio continues to diminish. 
and the 8K screens don't help that either. So OLEDs have moved more affordable and uh, more accessible to many of you. Keep in mind the LG C1 at 83 inches, I believe was $6,000. Um, where 77 inch C8 was 13,000 just a few years ago. 4K is here to stay as we've seen, or we will see, I already did a video on the X92 from Sony at a hundred inches and Sony Q90A at 98 inches in a few weeks. Now here is Roman's work again, very beautiful work. You see, he does the galaxy wallpapers as well. Check the description for Roman's work. And please, again, follow these creators and subscribe to them. Now, for me, <coughs> excuse me, with long gaming sessions, I do recommend this. If you are concerned with burn-in and concerned with uh, image retention, a good exercise is at the end of the night, take demos such as this one, create a playlist for yourself on YouTube and then just run these for five minutes. Now, though you see Roman's name in the corner, those are different pixels firing than the static image you'll get from a video game. So as a precaution, I'll put, you know, 15 of these on a loop. And as I'm done and I'm closing up my system, I'll just run these. And I promise you'll have, well, I don't know, can't swear you won't have any issues, but the using all the pixels, getting them moving away from those static, um, you know, uh, static HUDs is something you can do as a preventative measure. Uh, you know, you can also still use all the OLED care options that both um, or all the manufacturers provide now. But it's just an extra step. But how beautiful is this work? Now, if you haven't bought uh, a display during Black Friday, what is it you have? In the comments, let me know what you think. Again, my opinion, they are all super close. For me, LEDs look very different from one another. TCL, Hisense, Sony, LG, they all look very different. To me, OLEDs look very similar. They can look nearly identical, even without calibration. And again, we're aiming for a more vibrant image um, in this. This isn't a calibration video. I'm not a calibrator, nor do I want to be one. I am just you. The difference is I'm just making a video. These are more the settings you'll see as you experiment yourself in the black level the lack of any haloing of any kind at all lg the qned um, demos are some of the best that we've seen in the last few years which is ironic. I think the QNED lined up is, is very nice, but they're, um, they're AK especially, but it is ironic that the mini LEDs make some of the best OLED demos out there. I really wish we would see more demo material from the manufacturers themselves, which is safe. If you're somebody who is creating your own videos, the best way to know if you can use this material is to go straight from the source. LG Global, uh, Sony doesn't really have that many anymore, Samsung. If it's from them, if you take it from another creator who's using it, you can get into trouble there. And someone like Roman, you'll have to reach out and ask his permission same with Jennifer, but Jennifer does have this HDR super channel, which uh, is again for creators. If you wanted to film. Now the CX is also being sold. 
and it is replacing a very old plasma, which it'll be a very interesting video to show you why you should go up in size as your previous TV, even at the same size, is larger due to the bezel size. But we'll cover that in a future video. I hope all of you are well. I really appreciate all you guys. I appreciate your friendship. I hope you're having, um, you're doing okay coming out of this in this crazy time. Please be careful out there and Black Fridays and uh, just be mindful and be safe. I will see you in the comments. Again, I thank you. My family thanks you. Um, I love you guys. I hope you are all doing well. Let me know what you think, which you prefer, if any. And I'll see you in the comments. Love you guys. Take care.